गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रन गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग डियर चलो गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे फर्स्ट विल बी डूइंग अबाउट आर के बैक्टीरिया and then we'll be doing a little bit about protista so this is the target for today that we need to do we'll have uh, a bit about rk bacteria we'll study and then we'll study about protista we're still continuing with the first. if you remember we had started with two main categories of bacteria can you name them very quickly what were they primitive bacteria and modern bacteria what were the names rk bacteria and u bacteria rk bacteria and u bacteria so we have done a lot about u bacteria very quickly let us study a bit about rk bacteria look at this word rk ancient and back means rod so the word rk bacteria comes from two words rk and back what does the word rk mean ancient hmm. back means rod what does the word back to mean children it is rod rod so rod, ancient rods rk bacteria special thing about rk bacteria i had already told you when we started studying about this kingdom is that they can survive in extreme conditions so according to the conditions in which they can survive we put them in different categories those which can survive in extremely salty areas we call them as halophiles okay salts are called as halogens in chemistry if you remember so from there we have taken the word halo so halophiles those which are found in hot springs they are known as thermo acidophiles and those which are found in marshy areas they are known as methanogens so on the basis of the survival in different habitats we put them into different categories tell me very quickly the ones which are found in extremely salty areas what are they called halophiles halophiles and hot springs acidophiles thermo acidophiles see the name will tell you very quickly thermo acido means they can survive in both high temperatures therma and acido in acidic medium as well and the ones which are found in marshy areas we call them as methanogens methanogens so what is special about these bacteria is that their cell wall does not have peptido peptidoglycan then what is the cell wall made up of basically it is made up of non cellulosic poly area it is made up of two things mainly one is polysaccharide and the other is proteins however there are some uh, varieties or categories where there is no cell wall cell wall is absent only so we did about the three kinds of rk bacteria the main thing about rk bacteria is that they do not have peptidoglycan and what is the cell wall made up of polysaccharides yes polysaccharides and some proteins okay and some of them do not have a cell wall only quite different that is why they are able to survive in extreme kind of conditions why they are able to survive in extreme conditions because of this that they do not have peptidoglycan the cell wall is made up of proteins some proteins and polysaccharides chaliye we've just done this types of rk bacteria methanogens halophiles thermoacidophiles first i'm taking up methanogens with you what about main features of methanogens they only anaerobes okay they cannot survive in aerobic that of ruminants you know ruminants cows buffaloes and all so these methanogens are found in the gut of ruminants they used to produce gobar gas commercially we can use them to produce gobar gas 65% of the atmospheric methane is produced by these methanogens only so and the example is methanobacillus these are the main things about methanogens number 1 they are only anaerobes number 2 they live in the gut of ruminants number 3 they help to produce gobar gas number 4 65% of atmospheric methane is produced by methanogens and then is the example of methanogen and that is methanobacillus name one example of methanogen methanobacillus we move on to the second ones rk bacteria that are halophiles name itself tells you that they can survive in saline conditions 
they are mostly anaerobes see beta they were only anaerobes mm -hmm. methanogens they are only anaerobes and what about these let's come to this they are only they were only anaerobes they are mostly anaerobes this is the difference this is very special now they contain a chemical which is called halorhodopsin they contain a chemical which is called as halorhodopsin this is a very important chemical because it keeps sending in chlorides into the cell so that cell dehydration does not take place chlorides they help maintaining the proton pump and all chlorides help in maintaining the proton pump so what does halorhodopsin do it keeps on pumping inside chlorides so that chlorides can further pump the uh, hydrogen water balance and they can prevent the dehydration of the cell so name the chemical which can prevent the dehydration of a cell if it comes in some competition by pumping in chlorides it is halorhodopsin please name this chemical again everybody halorhodopsin 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 there is one very interesting example about this kind of archaea bacteria which i have taken up and that is halobacterium this is a very interesting example of halophiles halobacterium it has a purple membrane and why does it have a purple membrane because it has a very special photoreceptor pigment called bacteriorhodopsin bacteriorhodopsin this is what this is a photoreceptor pigment photoreceptor it responds to or it receives a particular wavelength of sunlight so here it is purple so that is why the membrane is purple halobacterium has a purple membrane because of the presence of which photoreceptor pigment bacteriorhodopsin bacteriorhodopsin yes it is bacteriorhodopsin we have done two categories we did methanogens then we did the second category that is halophiles now we are moving on to the third category of rk bacteria that is thermoacidophiles the name tells you thermoacido means they can survive in both extreme heat conditions and also in acidic conditions they can even survive in acidic medium as low as ph 2 okay even if the ph is so low it is only 2 then also they can survive see beta if the conditions are anaerobic they oxidize sulfur to sulfuric acid oxidize means addition of oxygen i think everybody knows about it so what do they do they add oxygen to sulfur and what is produced is sulfuric acid but this happens only obviously when conditions are anaerobic see what is happening over here sulfur if you see what is taken over here is sulfur and then what is being produced is sulfuric acid who what are these rk bacteria called which can produce sulfuric acid from sulfur which category of rk bacteria are these thermoacidophiles thermoacidophiles the name itself tells you very quickly that they can survive in both heat and acidic medium thermo that means extreme heat acid they can survive in acidic medium now see this okay beta see why they can survive in both heat and acidic medium there is a specific reason that why they can survive in both acidic and basic medium number one the enzymes they can work at low ph also the enzymes normally we had seen that there is a range where uh, enzymes become active range of temperature range of ph but the enzymes of these beta thermoacidophiles they can work at low ph also and they can survive to conditions of high temperature also the enzymes are very very resistant to temperature and ph values they can even survive to very low ph this is one and second reason third very important reason is they have lipids in their membrane and lipids are present in the form of branch chain there is a long chain of lipids which is present in the cell membrane and this is the reason 
that there is a long chain of lipids in the cell membrane that the cell membrane is very very strong so very quickly let us discuss the three reasons why thermoacidophiles can survive in such extreme conditions two reasons you can make out from the name only thermoacido enzymes are very resistant to thermo that means they can uh, survive in extreme temperature conditions acid they can survive in extreme ph also very low ph also even if it is 2 they can survive and the last and the most special one is in their cell membrane they have lipids what is present in the cell membrane lipids lipids and that is the reason that they can survive very comfortably in extreme conditions before i move on to the last fan last member which i had discussed with you when i started with monera that is pplo or mycoplasma first let me very quickly let me know what are the three categories of rk bacteria i have just discussed with you Hello, Which category of these three has the power to convert sulfur to sulfuric acid? Halophiles. Halophiles. Thermoacidophiles. thermoacidophiles thermo okay now what is so special in their membrane that thermoacidophiles can resist or survive in extreme temperatures and extreme acidic mediums they lipids. have lipid they have branch chain of lipids lipid which category has a purple membrane halophiles and why do they have a purple membrane because of the presence of a chemical what is that chemical bacteriorhodopsin bacteriorhodopsin what is so special about that pigment which kind of a pigment is it photore photoreceptor yes beta it is a photoreceptor pigment so we have done about new bacteria we have done about rk bacteria okay now we'll move further okay let's move further now we'll move on to the last member of this kingdom that is pplo mm -hmm. i had already told you they are also known as mycoplasmas the other name is what we call as mycoplasmas they completely lack cell wall number 1 they were discovered by rocks r o u x okay they are the smallest free living organisms 0.15 to 0.5 micrometers they are very very small living organisms they are saprotrophic you can find them in soil water dead decaying matter they are unicellular the plasma membrane is the outermost membrane that means they do not have a cell wall okay we had done about this that they are smallest organisms lacking cell wall they do not have a cell wall however they do have a cell membrane cell membrane is made up of three things see very interesting proteins lipids and cholesterol what are the three things which make the cell membrane of pplos or you can call them as mycoplasmas proteins lipids and cholesterol protein lipids and cholesterol the dna is naked they do not have a proper nucleus obviously their dna is naked two very interesting uh, pp uh, this uh, mycoplasma that i would like to discuss first is anabina anabina is very important because it prevents soil erosion it binds itself very tightly to the soil and it prevents soil erosion so it can be used for soil conservation this kind of bacteria that is mycoplasma you can it can be used for soil conservation because it prevents soil erosion what is the name of this tell me mycoplasma which prevents soil erosion and there is one more which very special you should know about it that is spirulina i'm sure you've heard about it spirulina it's a protein rich supplement very rich in proteins for human supplement actually humans take it in short commercially it is also called as scp that is single cell protein so if in the market you have scp available single cell proteins being sold as a human supplement it's actually spirulina 
what is it actually which is being sold as a human supplement very rich in proteins what is it is pyrolina pyrolina okay Pyrolina. now let us do the difference main differences between u bacteria and rk bacteria the first difference is very simple we had discussed beta that the u bacteria the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycans okay and just now we talked about rk bacteria the cell wall is made up of cellulosic carbohydrates but peptidoglycan is absent so the first and the main difference is in u bacteria the cell wall is made up of peptido glycans here generally they do not have a they may not have a cell wall at all for example we did the last one that is mycoplasma or even if there is a cell wall in a particular category it does not contain peptido glycan now let's move on to plasma membrane plasma membrane here is phospholipids but here we just discussed that it has a special chain of lipids okay the rk bacteria they have a chain of what lipids is it okay for everybody very quickly let me do before i move on to the next kingdom today i had decided this today rk bacteria the word rk is ancient ancient back means back means broad broad if they are found in extremely salty areas what will you call them as hello fils no hello fils good hot springs thermo acidophiles acidophiles good and marshy areas methanogens methanogens the most important thing to remember about rk bacteria because this is the main difference between u bacteria that the cell wall lacks peptidoglycan it does not have peptidoglycan rather it is made up of non cellulosic polysaccharides there is no cellulose no peptidoglycans polysaccharides in proteins some proteins are there and polysaccharides and in some cell wall is even absent we have already done these three categories of methanogens beta 65% of atmospheric methane is produced by methanogens okay and then this is also found in the gut of humans most important thing they are only anaerobes only anaerobes halophile the name tells you they can be found in saline conditions in this we need to remember about this that they contain a chemical which is called halorhodopsin halorhodopsin which prevents cellular dehydration then we also talked about halobacterium which has a purple membrane because of the presence of this photoreceptor pigment lastly we talked about thermoacidophiles they can be they can survive in both therma and acido high temperatures and low ph that is why we call them as thermoacidophiles they have the power of converting sulfur to sulfuric acid and why they can survive in both these conditions because the enzymes can work at low ph high temperatures and they have branch chain of lipids in the membrane lastly we talked about mycoplasma they are the smallest ones they do not have a cell wall they were discovered by rocks they are unicellular the outer membrane is always plasma membrane they never have a cell wall beta then we talked about two very important ones anabina which helps in what so preventing soil erosion good and the last one is spirulina which is used as protein supplement protein protein supplement protein supplement excellent then finally we talked about two differences here the cell wall has peptidoglycan here it does not have the plasma membrane has phospholipids and here we have a chain of only lipids now we move on to protista the second kingdom we done with the first kingdom which was the first kingdom monera monera now we are moving on to protista beta whenever we say protista remember one thing unicellular eukaryotes okay always keep in mind this word so that protista is very clear to you whenever we think about protista what are we going to think about tell me the word unicellular eukaryotes yes just remember this that they unicellular and they are eukaryotic organisms so most of the things will become automatically clear to you that protista are i'll just give you one minute just see the slide let me explain it to you just see on the screen beta
Okay, dear. Very quickly. What did we remember about Pratista? What is the main thing that we need to remember about Pratista? I told you. These are very interesting. Okay. See, they are very interesting compared to Monera. You will find them more interesting. They are primarily aquatic. They can be both marine or they can be found in fresh waters. This term Pratista was given by Hackel. These are the three things we need to remember. Let us classify Pratista now. Photosynthetic protists, protozoan protists, and saprophytic protists. We have mainly three category of protista: photosynthetic, protozoans, and saprophytic. I'll be taking up each one separately over here. I'll be going a little more details in protista. Why, beta? I'm going in a little more detail than what is given in biological classification in books is because in class twelfth, you do not have anything related to classification. Class 12 biology has no nothing to do with plant classification, animal classification, nothing. So this is the last year of your school life that you're doing classification, and you've done very basics in class ninth. Again in class tenth, you did not have anything related to classification. So that is why I'm going into a little more detail about classification. Those of you who are targeting for NEET or any other competitions, you have questions from this beta, but the point is. that in 10th you have nothing related to classification in 12th also you have nothing not even a word related to this what we are doing now that is why let's go into a little more detail see beta photosynthetic protists all those protists which are autotrophs we put them in this category all the heterotrophs will be put in this category because they are animal like so we call them as protozoan protists and the last one mode of nutrition you can understand only that they are saprophytic now we are further going to classify the first ones that is photosynthetic protist photosynthetic protist okay see we have three categories chrysophyte pyrophyte and euglenophyta chalo koi baat nahi pareshan nahi let's do it again photosynthetic protists are autotrophs they are further classified into the first one that is chrysophyta they are golden in color so we call them as golden algae so which one is called as the golden algae with sub category chrysophyta 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 chryso c r y s o because they are golden in color okay see we call them as golden algae now understand this word they are protist but we call them as golden algae golden because they are golden in color and algae because they can photosynthesize so we call them as golden algae the word golden is coming because they are golden in color and algae because they are able to photosynthesize example of this is diatoms i have taken diatoms in details because this is the most important one from where you have questions so diatoms i have taken up in detail so chrysophyta is which which colored golden golden yes. the second one is pyrophyta pyro p y r o pyrophyta they are known as fire algae because when you see them they are actually bioluminescent they emit light some kind of bioluminescence is there uh, you know about the term bioluminescence yes have you heard about bioluminescence in which thing you have heard wo jugnu ke bare mein padha hoga somewhere in junior classes they are bioluminescent okay living ones which seem to emit light similarly this one pyrophyta pyrophyta they are known as fire algae and the example is dinoflagellates here we had the example diatoms examples are very important and here we have the example dinoflagellates let's come to this euglenophyta the third one the third category is euglenophyta the example is euglena see euglena is again very special because it is a connecting link between plants and animals very quickly with me now we were talking about protista the first category of protista were the autotroph ones which are known as photosynthetic protists tell me the three subdivisions of photosynthetic protists i'll show you on the screen also chrysophyta pyrophyta and chrysophyta pyrophyta and euglenophyta the first one is also known as golden algae golden algae golden algae golden algae they are called golden algae because golden because they have a golden color and algae because they perform they photosynthetic Excellent. Which is the second one? Pyrophyta. 
Okay, I'll give you one minute. There are three, four points on your screen about protozoan protest. Let us read quickly, and then I'll explain it to you better. If you see protozoan protest, okay, they are one very special category is the sarcodina. Sarcodina, they are called as amoeboid protests. Why do we call them as amoeboid protests? Because they show locomotion by pseudopodia. they show locomotion by pseudopodia and the best example no doubt is amoeba so protozoan protists the first one is sarcodina which is the first division sarcodina the common name for sarcodina here we have the amoeboid protists because the locomotion is by pseudopodia and the example of sarcodina is amoeba let's come to the second division that is ciliata they have cilia for locomotion see we are classifying them on the basis of locomotion only the second one have cilia for locomotion so we call them as ciliata example is paramecium and the third category is zooflagellata zooflagellata because they have flagella example is trypanosoma the last one sporozoans beta they do not need any locomotive structures why they do not need any locomotive structures because they are endoparasites and the example is plasmodium so we have to classify the second category that is protozoan protists on the basis of locomotion okay beta the first one is sarcodina sarcodina shows locomotion by what cytopodia cytopodia example is amoeba very good the second subdivision is ciliata and they show locomotion by cilia cilia the third one is zooflagellata so their locomotion must be by flagella example trypanosoma 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 the last ones the sporozoans they do not lean, need any locomotive structures why they don't need any locomotive structures because they are endoparasites because they are endoparasites and what is the example we discussed just now plasmodium plasmodium now we very quickly move on to the third and the last division that is sporozoans sorry saprophytic which ones are these saprophyte example first first subdivision of saprophytes is slime molds okay beta what is the first uh, subdivision we have in saprophytes slime molds you've heard about them somewhere yes ma'am mm -hmm. sure pakka okay yes ma'am okay fine fine photosynthetic protists 80% of photosynthesis in the entire environment is by photosynthetic protists when i talked about photosynthetic protists i also talked about the first subcategory that is chrysophyta or golden algae and i gave you an example of what beta diatoms diatoms 
so taking diatoms in detail <clears throat> i'll explain to you and you will understand everything about photosynthetic protists we cannot pick up all the members of photosynthetic protists so we have just taken up one that is diatoms and understanding about diatoms you will be able to understand the entire process of functioning structure about photosynthetic protist why are photosynthetic protist so important because they contribute to how much percent of photosynthesis 80 percent hmm how many how much percent beta speak out children just one child 80 percent 80 80 percent okay before see we'll be discussing about them how they look like see this is we are going to see about them how they look like before i go into details about diatoms very quickly let me go back to this part protista what we had done with you protista we had started from here yes beta about this fourth first one photosynthetic protists tell me very quickly what are the categories three categories photosynthetic protists chrysophyta pyrophyta chrysophyta and, and euglenophyta which, which one is bioluminous pyrophyta pyrophyta Pyrophyta. Which one is cry? Which one is golden in color? Pyrophyta. Pyrophyta. And which one shows characteristics of both plants and animals, or it is a connective? Euglenophyta. Euglenophyta. Example of chrysophyte. Diatoms. Diatoms. What about uh, the example of pyrophyta? dinoflagellates 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 and what about the example of euglenophyta euglena now we move on to the second one the second category of protists first were the photosynthetic the second are the protozoan protists in protozoan protists the first subdivision is sarcodina locomotion is by Cedopodia. Very good. Example is amoeba. 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 Second one is ciliata. So locomotion Cilia. is by ciliata. Very good. Third is zoo flagellata. Locomotion by flagella. And the last one sporozoans. Locomotion by do not need locomotion as they are endoplasmids. Parasite. Endoparasite. the endoparasites for example plasmodium so it lives inside the body of the host so it does not have to move around so it does not leave any locomotive structure moving on to the last division that is saprophytes we have slime molds okay uh, they the main difference that we have is these uh, monera and protista see the main difference till here that we have done between monera and protista is protista has membrane bound organelles but monera does not have any membrane bound organelles this is one difference now let's come to this photosynthetic protists are very important how much percent of photosynthesis are performed by photosynthetic protists 80% okay actually danish sir is on leave for today and tomorrow tomorrow also he is not there so a lot of changes in the timetable beta that is why your bio class also has been shifted and it will be a little shorter one compared to the normal class that we had so whatever we had planned we will not be able to do much today we did uh, we started with which kingdom today protista archaebacteria no archaebacteria kingdom is only complete 